All right, welcome to part two of our Red Power tutorial series. Um, this is Captain Jack, and I'm here with Ingram. And we are going to move on to part number two, and that's wires. Now, you don't necessarily need this stuff right off the bat to start out with, but it's good to have a basic understanding about how different wires work, what they do, how to connect them. And so we're just going to go through a brief tutorial about a few things here. And we're going to walk over here. We have uh, jacketed blue wire, which we've already talked about a little bit. We have bundled cable, insulated wire, and that comes in 16 different colors, but we just have yellow up there. And you can see that this is connected to red alloy wire, which is the next type of wire. We have jacketed red wire and jacketed bundled cable. So let's go over here and we're going to take a look at an example that we set up to show us a little bit of how bundled cable works along with the jacketed wire along with red wire. So we have three different lights up here. We have a red light, a green light, and a yellow light. And these are attached to levers. Now you can see that there's a bundled cable here, which is the colorful one, the red, green, and blue, purple cable. And out of that bundled cable is coming insulated wire. We have a yellow wire, a green wire, and a red wire. And each of those is hooked up to a switch. Now when I flip the red switch, here, that's connected to the red wire. The red light goes on. Ah, look at that. If I click the green switch, the green one goes on, and likewise, the yellow goes on. Now let's go back there and see how these things work. All right. So, what Captain Jack has done is he's got his bundled cable is actually running up and straight up this wall, and then in order to get to something um, that you can actually use you need to convert off a of bundle cable, hopefully you don't fall off the ledge like I just did, you need to convert off a of bundle cable into your insulated wire. And so if we want to use the green wire here, um, which is tied again to his lever back over here, you can see, we're going to come out of this bundled cable or with the jacketed green wire. And then in order to get the signal to pass through these blocks, you need bare red alloy wire. The only thing that will ever pass through blocks is bare red alloy wire. If we were to put a signal on the other side of this green um, jacketed cable here, the signal wouldn't pass all the way through, and so it would be lost in the middle of that block. Now, that same principle is repeated up the wall, so we have the yellow switch comes out of the bundled cable and goes into the red alloy wire, which hits the back of these lamps, and that turns the two lamps on. Same thing with the red. Um, it's important to know the distinction between jacketed or excuse me not jacketed know the distinction between insulated wire and bare wire um, insulated wires will not connect for example if Captain Jack were to put um, another row of red alloy wire right here next to this one he's just laid down then you can see how they'll all connect to each other now if you were to do that with two different colors of insulated wire the wires themselves would never connect now, get rid of, yep, there you go, perfect. So see, these two wires will never connect because they're not the same color, and that's important to know. Um, now, it would be annoying to have to run lines of wires for every single color, so that's where bundled cable comes in. And bundled cable holds 16 of all 16 of the colors in this one block. Now, there's actually 16 variations on the bundled cable itself, and you can see them up here. And basically what you do is you take a piece of bundled cable and you give it a different color and put it in the put it in your uh, crafting table or just your regular um, uh, inventory table and it will turn the bundled cable into colored bundled cable and that looks slightly different I'll grab some green bundled cable here hopefully this is visually distinct and here we go see there's a green wire wrapping around it so what that lets you do is it lets you have 16 versions of the 16 colors. So you have quite an array. Um, it's not likely that you'll need that many colors, but depending on the complexity of your design or your organization pattern, um, that might be important. The other thing to note too is if I grab a magenta color here just to get a different color, uh, these guys will not actually merge with each other, but they will merge with uncolored um, wire. So if I put just the magenta here, it will not connect to another type of bundled cable, but it will connect to the, the generic bundled cable. So that's something to watch out for. 
Something else I have set up here is a sequencer. Now this is a logic circuit and we'll be going through these later on. That's actually going to be the last part of our tutorial series, which I will have nothing to do with, I can assure you. <laughs> uh, what this does is it basically just ticks around. It lights up these redstone torches on four sides. And as it lights them up, a signal will pass through the cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a red cable here. And you see that that attaches. A yellow cable here. And a green one here. And when it hits that red cable, the light goes on. And likewise, the yellow and the green. So this is something you're going to use much later on to design machines that work themselves, that stay powered intermittently, and they're not constantly receiving a redstone signal without you having to um, control them with a lever, with a button, or whatever you're using. And that's one of the key things um, that we're going to that we're going to talk about at length in later tutorials. I absolutely hate machines that run. Uh, with things like timers and sequencers that can't be turned off. And so we're going to show you how to, to set up logic circuits and set up your wiring so that your machines aren't always running um, unless they need to be. So we'll, we'll go over that in greater detail. Now what Captain Jack is showing here right now is the jacketed version of bundled cable. And you can see there there's all the colors. Um, just like on your bundled cable, except this guy's jacketed, and so he doesn't need to be laid down on anything. He can, it, it can climb up walls, it can climb in empty space, as we've seen here. And in order to connect back, in order to be actually usable, you have to place a piece of bundled cable underneath it. This is very um, common with all of your wiring requirements. Um, the only way you can get between different pieces of cable, for example, insulated cable, um, and a jacketed version is you have to lay down your piece of insulated cable, then a piece of bare red wire, and then coming out of the red wire, you can use your jacketed cable. And I'll just illustrate that very quickly. So if I were to grab some of our red wool jacketed red cable, red wire, if I were to put it here, it's not going to connect anything. I can't put it on top of the bundled cable because it's not the same type, but I can. I can't also put it on top of directly um, directly on top of insulated cable. I actually need a piece of bare red wire, and I'll cue that up here. If we put bare red alloy wire down and then put our jacketed cable on top, you can see how they connect. It seals to the top of the block, and you can see now that the sequencer just hit that piece and turned it right on. And here's another example of that right here. This, the reason why this is so helpful and why we like it so much and why we recommend it is because you can make these wires go any direction you want vertically, horizontally, and you don't have to actually stick this wire to any block. So it just acts on its own and it makes for much more compact designs with whatever you're trying to do. Another important thing to note too is that this kind of jacketed cable will still work if I were to grab a machine that takes a red power signal, for example a filter. Um, these typically need, they always need to be hooked up with a red power signal. And so you can see here that jacketed, if we were to stack these guys, jacketed cable will connect to the side of these machines. So if you're setting up a more elaborate system and you wanted to say hook up a bunch of machines all at once, you can have these things still suspended in the air. You don't have to worry about trying to get red wire on top of them, which is awesome. You can also put bundled cable in a setup similar to this. You just need a little bit more space. If, for example, you wanted to only fire some of these filters off at once and save others for a different color. I think that's it. Unless we have anything else, we've gone over jacketed red wire, jacketed blue wire, jacketed bundled cable bundled cable itself, red wire, and a little bit of how they all work together. And again, this is not necessarily something that we'll be using in our machines that we're going to be showing you in the next few tutorials, but it's something that is knowledge that everybody should have with Red Power um, to make end game machines, machines that are extremely compact, and again, that operate all on their own. It's also a critical component in more advanced designs like the elevator that automatically adjusts itself to your location, um, and even when we get to it, the flying airship. So, um, as always, thanks for watching. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, let us know if you get stuck or have any questions, and thanks for watching. Yark, stay poised.